أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور رحيم ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة إذ فعبلتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتري لولا أن هدانا الله In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most gracious the dispenser of grace all praise and blessings are due to Allah Rabb, Narissa and sustainer of the universe we thank and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having guided us we realize without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance, we might not have been guided. My dearest brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have titled this week's Nasiha, Imagining the Promise of the Medina as we reckon with a fire in the city. The sacred waqt or time of Jumu'ah is a pause from the challenges and afflictions of our daily life. Jumu'ah is a time when we are at one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's moral purposes. This is an opportunity to recharge our commitments to goodness and fellowship. A devastating fire swept through the mountainous parts of our city of Cape Town this week, forcing those affected to adjust, move out of harm's way to safety and comfort. Thankfully, there were no fatalities, but plant and mountain ecologies were eviscerated buildings, pathways, educational infrastructure, and human beings, people, were engulfed in fire and smoke. Precious built infrastructures were destroyed, leaving questions about whether they will ever be replaced. Looking at pictures of the decimation of the University of Cape Town's library and African archive holdings was indeed painful and heart-aching. Cape Town is used to fires in late summer. 
but the wide and rapid spread of this week's fire forced thousands of students and residents to evacuate their residences. Smoke hung in the air in and around the city. We anxiously observed the progress of the fire on television and on social media, and our immediate reaction was one of dismay and disquiet. The citizens of the city expressed outpourings of grief, while many made concrete contributions to rescue and relief efforts. A large part of Cape Town has a quizzical and puzzling relationship to the city, its mountain and its surroundings. In this context, the reaction to the fire can be regarded as somewhat confounding. We are simultaneously alienated from the city, while basking in the city's majesty and rich environmental ecologies. Many of us never feel properly part of the city's ownership, uncomfortable with the extremes between the comforts of suburban life and the racialized poverty in the townships. This is particularly true for those communities who were removed from around the environments, forcibly removed from the environments of the mountain. Yet, the devastation associated with the fires this week caused us to interrupt this narrative momentarily, inciting an imagination of urban life based on fellowship and fairness. Such imagining is born of the hope of a better, more inclusive urban future. So through the fog and smoke, somehow, there must be an ability to see clearly our role in building a fairer city. The devastation wreaked by the fire softened our repos just enough to imagine a more humane and fairer city. The Quran offers a window to identify how to work productively with others in a city where fires are very common. We anticipate similar joined up rapid responses when disasters strike in either the suburbs or the townships, and we live in hope of a fairer distribution of resources in the wake of the devastation of fires all over the city. The Quran uses two concepts to refer to built living environments in 7th century Arabia. These are, on the one hand, Qarya, and on the other hand, Medina. The word Qarya denotes an insidious environment where people revel in excessive and perverse behavior while ignoring their religious duties. The people of the Qarya deserve Allah's wrath because they reject Allah's warning delivered by the messengers. In this light, the Quranic Dua prompts a cry for freedom from this type of environment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares in Surah An-Nisa, رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةِ الظَّالِمِ أَهْلُهَا O oh, our Lord, our sustainer, lead us forth to freedom out of this qarya, out of this town whose people are oppressors. The qarya is a place of subordination and conflict where division among people runs deep and is seemingly unresolvable. The qarya does not have the necessary traction to respond to the demand for dignity and fairness. Inhabitants in the Qarya live in an endless cycle of recrimination and revenge. At the root of such a situation is a lack of willingness to share the resources equitably of the environment among its inhabitants. The Qarya simply was not a place where dignity and, and solidarity existed. In contrast, the Quranic concept Medina is the term for the city as the center of a religiously and politically structured social life. The Medina is an abode of possibility and human flourishing according to the Quran. The Quran uses Medina in the context of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's hijrah to Yathrib and his political leadership of the town that was eventually named after him as Medina to Nabawi. 
the city of the Prophet. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was confronted with the challenge posed by Medina's munafiqoon. These hypocrites threatened his governance of the city or the Medina. Allah pointed this situation out in Surah Ahzab when Allah declares that if the hypocrites and those with diseased hearts and they who by spreading false rumors would cause disturbances in the city of the Prophet desist not from their hostile doings. We shall indeed give thee mastery of them, O Muhammad. It was necessary to neutralize all kinds of improper conduct in the Prophet city. The munafiqoon or the hypocrites stirred sedition and put false rumors into circulation. Decisive strategic action had to be taken to neutralize the munafiqoon in order to secure the city's viability as a Darul Salam wal Aman, an abode of peace and safety. The Quran describes a methodology for the governance of the Medina based on alliance building and good interfamily and tribal as well as interfaith relations. The city of Medina emerged as a result as a place of friendship or sadaqa, where Allah's mercy, his rahmah, became abundant. Transforming a city from a qariya or a place of hostility into a dignified Medina has to be based on friendship, charity and mercy. And as idealistic as this may seem, the Quran compels us to move from a situation of being trapped in morally bankrupt circumstances to the fairness and dignity available in the Medina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this regard declares in Surah Fussilat, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةِ إِدَفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares that good and evil cannot be equal, O Prophet. Repel evil with what is better, and your enemy will become as close as a valued friend, a bosom friend. This ayah prompts us into an apparently impossible direction when it requires us to cooperate with the other, those on the other side of the city, to invest in the possibility of friendship with the other. It asks us to view the city as an unlikely abode where we would work together towards a fairer, more just city. Such a situation, the Quran suggests, would likely lead to a culture of trust and goodwill among the inhabitants of the Medina. The Quran suggests that our hostility Based on a, is on a, based on a lack of knowing the other, and that such hostility can be overcome. The Quran offers a deeply forgiving and a generous mode for moving productively across boundaries. Living a life of forgiveness and generosity is always the preferred, the preferred or favoured option. Such a generous response leaped out with compelling beauty in response to this week's fire. Active for decades amongst Muslims in South Africa, the etiquette of service or khidmah in the face of needs has so clearly accompanied the emergency responses of the organization Waqful Waqifun, or as we know them by the name of the gift of the givers as well as other welfare agencies. They facilitated the students' evacuation, they helped to accommodate them, and they supplied meals to the students and fire persons quickly, efficiently, and professionally. In addition to these agencies, there was an overwhelming response from ordinary citizens volunteering their services and resources to assist 
where they can. Khidmah, or service to humanity, is regarded as a righteous practice that announces a willingness to establish practices that secure human dignity. Giving service to humanity points to a commitment to developing systems and institutions for human survival and flourishing. Khidmah, khidmah, or service, is a bodily practice deeply wired into the psyche of South African Muslims. And it is this culture of khidmah or service that is a gift for establishing friendship in pursuit of fairness, in pursuit of equality and justice. The Prophet encouraged such a life orientation when he advised, advised in a hadith that whoever lightens the burden of someone in difficulty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall lighten his burden in this life and in the next, according to a hadith narrated in Sahih Muslim. Moreover, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the believer to respond charitably to the plight of the poor by declaring Allah, إِنَّ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ وَالْمُصَدِّقَاتِ وَأَقْرَضُ اللَّهَ قَرْدًا حَسَنًا يُضَعَفُ لَهُمْ وَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَرِيمٌ Allah declares that for those who give in charity, men and women, and loan to Allah a beautiful loan, it shall be increased manifold, and they shall have a noble reward of paradise. Stands therefore to reason that charity is a salvational practice that Muslims establish as part of their lives. Various forms of sadaqah, or charity are meant to lighten the burden of those in need. Sadaqah demonstrates our value to others. It establishes our bona fides for participation in the struggle for securing optimal futures. I suggest then that an etiquette based on charity must be allowed to multiply and morph further into widespread practices of khidmah, of being of service to the plight of humanity and responsive to need. In other words, khidmah should become our way of life, not just our response to emergency circumstances. Khidmah and our acts of sadaqah, our acts of charity, are done without ever expecting earthly praise and reward. It generates acceptance and legitimacy in the eyes of others. Such an unquestioning service to humanity opens the door to allow for linking up with those who practice, for example, Africa-centered humanity, typified by the Zulu saying, Umuntu ngumuntu ngabantu. This loosely translates as a person is a person through other people. Through our ordinary virtuous conduct, our sadaqah, our khidmah, and our good practices, our ma'roof, we establish bonds with others. Our service to humanity opens us up to working towards a fairer and an inclusive city. In conclusion, this week's fire on Table Mountain and its aftermath compel a reckoning with its devastating consequences in an unequal city. As Muslims, we are required to engage the Quranic instruction to construct a Medina, not a Qariya, a Medina which is a city, a home for all. This is especially pertinent during the month of Ramadan, in which we align our lives with the plight of the marginal and the excluded. Such a Medina is not as elusive as we may think. It is not a fantasy. Our charity and service have provided a platform for friendship and cooperation that will allow us to build a fair and inclusive city. And it is on this platform that we have to construct such a city, an inclusive and enviable and sustainable city that will take us into the future with confidence, inshallah. We make dua and pray 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High, will guide us and grant us the courage and ability to fashion such a Medina, such a virtuous city, right here in Cape Town and into the future. Allahumma amin. Aqulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم آمين يا الله اللهم اعتك ركابنا وركاب آبائنا وأمهاتنا وأولادنا وجميع المسلمين من النار أجمعين ربنا تقبل منا صلاتنا وصيامنا وقيامنا وركوعنا وسجودنا وتسبيحنا وتحليلنا ولا ترده علينا إنك السميع الدعاء اللهم بفضلك وجودك كرمك أجمعين وتب وزكي وعفو عمن يكون آمين 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 وصلى الله وسلم عليه والحمد لله رب العالمين